Hello, today I will be working through the practice problems in section three of the PSAT practice test that was handed out to all students in the fall of 22. This is a speed review. I will be working through the questions very quickly. So what I recommend is that you've worked through the problems on your own, you figure out what you know and what you don't know, and then use this review to go through the questions um, and see what you did right, what, see what you did wrong, maybe what you could improve for the test day coming up. So here we go. Okay, so this is the booklet that was handed out to all students. I'm going to take my keys off so they don't make noise through the entire presentation. Okay, practice test number two. We're going to open to section three. Um, I'll also be recording section four here in the next day or two. So if you're watching this and want to work through section four, just stay tuned. Um, I will work through that next and record it as I go. So again, I'm going through this very quickly. If you need to pause at any point, please pause the video. Okay, so here is question one. It says, which of the following is an equivalent form of the expression 15x plus 24ax? You're looking for something that simplifies to this right here. Um, 39ax squared, that is not the answer. You can't add 15 plus 24 because your variables are a little bit different here. Um, for the next one, if you were to distribute this, you'd get 39a, definitely not that. Here, if you distributed the x, 5x and 8xa, not the same as this one, but with this one, if you distribute that x, you do get 15x plus 24ax, which is the same as that, so this is the one that is equivalent. Okay, next one, number two, this is a very common question as well, the formula d equals r times t. Um, they want you to rearrange it so that way um, r is by itself. So based on the formula, what is the rate r in terms of d and t? So you have to take this equation and get r by itself on one side of the equal sign. So to do that, I'm gonna divide both sides by t. And then I get d over t equals r, or r equals d over t, and that is the answer choice I am looking for, so it would be a. Then over here, number three, which of the following ordered pairs, x, y, satisfies both equations? So for this one, what I'm going to do is go through the answer choices and plug it into the equations and see which um, pair of coordinates um, satisfy both of these equations. To make this go quickly, I'm going to start with the easier of the equations over here, x equals y minus 4, and I'm going to plug these coordinates into this equation. If it works, then I'm also going to plug it into this one to see if it works. So for the first set of coordinates, I have 0, negative 4, so 0 equals negative 4 minus 4, I get 0 equals negative 8. That doesn't work, so therefore a is not a correct answer. The next one, I get 2 equals 6 minus 4. 2 does equal 6 minus 4. 2 equals 2. So this is a possible answer choice. Now I'm going to take this and plug it into the second equation and see if it works. If it does work, this is going to be the correct answer. So I get 6 equals 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 4. So 2 squared would be 4 plus 6 minus 4. This cancel, 4 minus 4 is 0, and 6 does equal 6. It works for both, so B is the correct answer. If I have extra time at the end, I may check these just to make sure I didn't make an error here, but time is impor important when it comes to the PSAT. We only have 25 minutes, so we're going to move on to the next one. Which of the following is a solution to the equation? For this one, I'm going to take each of these answer choices, plug it in, and see if it works. So negative 1, I'm just going to plug that in. Negative 1 squared would be positive 1 times 2 is 2, plus 4 times negative 1 would be negative 4. Negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1, it would be positive 1 times 3 would be 3, and I get 6 equals negative 2. That doesn't work, so this is not a correct answer. Um, I'm not going to write out the work for each of these with the 0. This would be 0 plus 0, which is just 0. Over here would be 0 plus 3. 0 does not equal 3, so b is not a correct answer. With c, 2 times 3 squared plus 4 times 3 equals 3 plus 3 times 3 squared. So just quickly solving this, 9 times 2 is 18 plus 12. 3 squared would be 9. 9 times 3 is 27 plus 3. I get 30 equals 30. Great. That means c is my correct answer. And moving on to the next question. Number 5. Now we're dealing with systems of equations. It wants to know the value of x. 
With systems of equations, we, can't, we want something to cancel. If I multiply all of this by three, um, what I will get, I'm gonna rewrite the first equation. Multiply all of this by three, I get three X minus 30 Y equals 16 times three is 48. And now I'm gonna add these together and negative three X plus three X is just gonna be zero. So that will cancel. I get negative 34 Y equals 68. I can divide by negative 34 and I get y equals negative two. Here it's asking for the value of x. So now that I have y equals negative two, I can plug it into either one of these and get the value of x. So negative three x minus four times negative two equals 20 plus eight equals 20. Did I? I can then subtract eight from both sides. I get negative three x equals 12, divide by negative three, and I get x equals negative four. And that is in my answer choices, it is C. Okay, moving down to number six. Um, number six, the equation y equals 36 plus 18x models the relationship between height, y and inches of a typical golden delicious apple tree. So y is the height over here. Um, after the number of years, x, it was planted. If the equation is graphed in the xy plane, what is indicated by the y-intercept of, of the graph? Okay, if I was to rearrange this into y equals mx plus b format, y equals 18x plus 36, it wants to know what the y-intercept indicates. In this case, we're talking about a tree and how fast it grows per year. So, the y-intercept right here would be the original height, and then you're adding the 18 inches each year. So um, we're looking for the height of a typical apple tree when it's planted. Now, number seven over here. Um, Giovanni wants to buy a shirt that costs $19.40 each and sweaters that cost $24.80. So the shirts are $19.40, sweaters are $24.80. Great. An 8% sales tax will be applied to the entire purchase. Okay, when we have 8% sales tax, if you were to take 0.08 and multiply it by the cost of a shirt, let's say $13, you would get the tax on that shirt. But there's actually a little hack here. If you put 1.08, not only do you find the tax on the $13, but you automatically add that $13 into it. So one times 13 is gonna be 13, and then you're adding the 8% as you calculate it. So when you see 1.08, that is referring to the sales tax. It's one times the cost plus the 8% sales tax. Um, so keep that in mind. Now we will look further into this. If Giovanni buys two shirts, so two shirts at 1940, so 1940 times two, um, which equation relates the number of sweaters purchased P? Sweaters will be P. And the total cost in dollars Y. Okay, now setting this up, total cost is Y. Um, it's gonna be 1.08 sales tax times the entire thing, so we'll use parentheses. Um, we have two shirts at 1940. Now you can't use a calculator on this section, so you can either take this times it by two or add two 1940s together. And I get 3880, so 3880 for the shirts, plus the cost of the sweaters, 2480 each, and sweaters is P. So now when I look up here, this is what I'm looking for, and it looks like it is answer A. Now moving on to number eight. A line is graphed on the xy plane, so I'm automatically kind of sketching out an xy plane. If the line has a positive slope, positive slope goes up and to the right, and a negative y-intercept would be down here somewhere, um, which of the following points cannot lie on the line? So let's say your line is right here, has a positive slope, negative y-intercept. I'm looking through each of the coordinates. Negative 3, 3, yes, that could land on the line. Negative 3, 3 up here, probably not, but I'm gonna double check the other answers. 3, negative 3 could definitely lie on that line, especially if it was a little bit lower. Um, that could lie on that line. And then 3, 3, yes, this point could lie on the line as well. So our answer is B. This point right here in the second quadrant would not lie on that line. Okay, we are almost halfway done with this section already. Now number 9. A parachute uses 18 separate pieces of rope. So parachute right here, 18 separate pieces of rope coming down from that parachute. Um, each piece of rope must be at least 270 centimeters 
and no more than 280 centimeters. What inequality represents all possible values of the total length, so that means all 18 pieces of rope in centimeters needed for the parachute? So right now I'm just writing, okay, so the length of the rope has to be um, greater than or equal to 270 and less than or equal to 280 in between that range. But we're talking about all 18 pieces, so we actually have to multiply this by 18 and multiply this by 18. Can't use a calculator, so we have to do multiplication kind of like the old-fashioned way, <laughs> the fourth grade way. So 0 times 8 is 0, 7 times 8 is 56, 2 times 8 is 16, plus 5 is 21. Put a 0 there, then 0 times 1 is 0, 7 and 2. We add this up, we get 4860. So I'm crossing out these two answers. If I was pressed for time, I might look at these and see, see which one's logical. Um, and you could probably guess that C is the most logical answer out of these two. But just to do the multiplication over here, 16 plus 6 would be 22, 0, 0, 8, 2. And I get 50, 40. So there we go. Answer C. Moving on to number 10. A carpenter has $60 to work with, so $60, he has to spend less than or equal to that $60. The carpenter needs to buy both nails and screws. Nails cost $12.99 per box, and that is going to be our N, and screws cost $14.99 a box, that's going to be S, and it tells me right, that right there, N and S. Um, which of the following systems of inequalities models this situation? So first off, I'm thinking $12.99 per box of nails plus $14.99. Um, for the box of screws. We got this. I look at my answer choices. I can cross these two out. It's between these two. Um, looking at what else they're looking for, n plus s is less than or equal to 1. Uh, well, they did say something up here that said they have to buy both nails and screws. So my box of nails must be ha have to be greater than or equal to 1, and so would the screws. So the best answer is D. Moving on to number 11, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. Number 11, now we're working with some triangles, bringing in some geometry. In the figure above, which of the following ratios has the same value of AB over BC? So looking this, at this, AB and BC are right here. Just drawing that greater triangle, our AB is the medium length side, BC is the short length side, and then this is our long length side. So they're comparing the medium to the short, so it's a medium to short ratio, and they're comparing it to this similar triangle down here. And this one here, we have our short side, our medium side, and our long side. So this was medium to short. Now for this smaller triangle, we're looking for medium to short. So it would be segment BD over DC, and then I'm looking for that in the answer choices, and it's right there. Okay, next question, number 12. This one is a bit of a more challenging question. You have to remember your exponent rules, and they really switch it up by adding those fractions in there too. So with exponents, when you have one outside the parentheses like this, you have to multiply that by these two numbers. So x squared, the 2 times 1 half is just going to be 1, so I get x. y to the third power, 3 times 1 half would be 3 halves. So we get y three halves like this as an exponent. Then multiply this one third by x squared, so that would be x and two thirds. And then three times one third is just one, so we get y. Now at this point, um, we have to further use our exponent rules. Um, when you multiply numbers, let me show you an example that's with whole numbers. Like if you take x squared and multiply it by x, you would get x to the third power. Essentially, you're adding these exponents, 2 plus 1, to get the 3. Or if it makes more sense this way, x times x, which is x squared, times one more x would be x to the third power. So we're going to use the same rule with the fractions. It just doesn't, it's a little bit more confusing because it is fractions. So x without an exponent is actually x to the first power, and we're multiplying that by x to the two-thirds power. We have to add these exponents, so we get x to the one and two-thirds. And from here, we're going to turn this into an improper fraction. So three times one plus two, so that would be x and five-thirds. Let me rewrite x with and five-thirds as an exponent. So we got that part. Now for the y's, we're going to do the same thing. y to the 3 halves 
times y to the first power. You're adding these exponents, so y is one to three halves power, which looks bizarre, that's not even, you know, proper. But we're gonna turn it into a proper improper fraction. Two times one is two, plus three would be five halves. So we get y, five halves. Now, looking back at our original up here, x is a over three, and y, a over two. Looking at what I got here, a is going to be five, so that is c. 13, if the equation y equals x minus six times x plus 12 is graphed in the xy plane, what is the x coordinate of the parabola's vertex? Okay, so parabola is like this. The highest point right here, there is an equation for that. The equation is negative b over two a. Let me make sure I get said that right, yes. Negative b over two a is that highest point, but in order to get b and a, we need this in standard form. So we're going to FOIL this or factor it out. Um, first, x squared outside 12x minus 6x minus 72. x squared plus 6x minus 72. We get this here. So our a right here would be the coefficient 1. Our b is right here, and this is our c. So using this, negative 6 over 2 times 1. Negative 6 over 2 equals negative 3, and that is our answer, b. Okay, next page. Now we're going to go to the free response questions. Um, so here we have our free response. It says in the equation above, A is constant. For what value of A does the equation have an infinite number of solutions? Well, if we do 7 times 3x, we need this to equal exactly. So in the simplified, it should be equal. 7 times 3x is 21x, so that matches this. And then we need seven times this number to equal 14. So seven times two would equal 14, so a must equal two. You could also solve this out for x, that would work too. Um, you could just solve it out for a, that would work too, but this was a short, the shortest way. 15, Julian practiced her dance routine for twice as many minutes on Monday as she did on Tuesday. So twice as many, that to me means two x, plus Tuesday. So x is Tuesday, I need to make a note of that for myself. She practiced her routine for two days for a total of two hours, 15 minutes. How, for how many minutes did Julian practice her dance routine on Monday? Okay, two hours, 15 minutes, two hours would be 120 minutes, plus 15 would be 135 minutes. Three x equals 135, um, divide by three, and we get x equals 45. Now that I have this, but this was Tuesday and she worked she did, she practiced twice as long on Monday. So two times 45 equals 90 minutes on Monday. Next question. In the expression below, a is an integer. Um, if three x plus four is a factor above, what is the value of a? Okay, so to factor this out, it's saying one of the factors is three x plus four. Um, 3x plus, or times what, would equal 12x squared, that would be 4x, and 4 times what would equal negative 20, that would be negative 5. So my factor here is 4x minus 5. Now I need to FOIL this out, so I get 12x squared, I get negative 15x, plus 4 times 4x is 16x, and then minus 20. Combine these like terms and I get 1x. Um, it's asking for what A is, and it would be 1. So 1 is what you would write in the box there. And then 17, we have this. This is one of the harder questions out of all of these. In the expression above, A, B, C, and D are non-zeros. A times D equals B times C. A times C equals 18. And B times D equals 50. Okay, so what two numbers multiply to make 18? The first thing that comes to mind is three and six equals 18, and for B and D, five and 10 come to mind for um, numbers that multiply to 50. Now you might have to do some guess and check here, but once I have that, I'm gonna see if it works over here. So A, if A is three and D is 10, does that equal five times six, B and C, five times six, and it does. Now, it might not work out the first time like it did for me, but if you do some guess and check, you should be able to figure it out. Now that I have the values of A, D, B, and C, I can plug that up here. So three X plus five Y, and then C is six X minus 10 is D, 10 
y. Now I'm going to foil this out. I get 18x squared outside negative 30xy plus positive 30xy. 5 times negative 10 is negative 50y squared. It wants to know what's the value of the coefficient of the xy term. Well, negative 30xy plus 30xy would actually be 0xy. So our coefficient is 0, and you would put it in the box like this. So for these free response, you just write the number and then make sure to bubble it in down here. Um, the bubbles are actually what gets scored, not what's written. So always make sure that whatever you write up here, you are bubbling it in here. And here are, um, is the answer key if you want to check your work if you need to. Um, and that is it for a speed review. I will upload section four soon. Um, have a good one and good luck with the test.